So here's a conversation that went on um, the AM show this morning. Uh, Louise Wallace uh, hits out at fat women in fashion advertising during the AM panel. Uh, the first clip we're going to look at, um, Nathan, that's Nathan King from Z, yeah? Um, so Nathan was talking about, it was quite funny actually, if you, we're not going to watch the whole thing, but Nathan starts talking about one of the things we can do to help you know, obesity in society. And he talks about a sugar tax. And as soon as he starts talking, he starts talking about we should do something about it, him and Louise, and Louise is nodding away. And as soon as he starts talking about a fat tax, her face is like, Ugh. and you can just see that she's like, nope, not into that, not into the sugar tax. Um, so Nathan's just finished the conversation about a sugar tax. And then the conversation goes on. But are they feeding us that? Hey, or fundamental that, just <clears throat> tape over people's mouths with gaffer tape. Yeah. Oh. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty funny. Gaffer tape on people's mouths. That'll solve, that'll solve the problem, my jokey joke. Now, just think, and I'm not trying to, to, to be sensitive to this, but just think if that was said about any other physical attribute of a human being in that kind of way. Like, think of a way to make a particularly offensive joke about it that... You know that that was the whole studio just laughed at sort of thing. It's it's a it, there's an interesting standard for being able to talk about f fat people, overweight people. You know, so I you mean, say it's sooner or later, it's yeah, but people. sooner or later, surely it's what goes in here, yeah, yeah, and what people. And I think that unfortunately we have normalised the idea of being overweight. Normalised mm. it, and I'll give you an example of that: is that when I was overseas quite recently, um, you would pass by. Um, these huge ads and for fashion, like whether, I don't know if it was Zara, but something like that, and there would be distinctly overweight women, like, dare I say it, fat women, in these ads advertising clothes, and that is now seen as normal. Doesn't it, doesn't it reflect what normality is? Doesn't it tell people Doesn't that... mean it's right, though, and it's not right, because people are getting sick. If it's unhealthy, yeah. it's not the a thing, good thing. It's a... So there's really interesting words used in that about it's not right. To me, that's a, a value judgment. You know, I think it's okay to put to put out there, you know, it's not a healthy choice. It's an unhealthy situation to be in. We know that. But the, the idea of right, right and wrong, because if it's not right, that means it's wrong. That means to be overweight is wrong. And that's a really heavy way and a heavy language to put on someone and I'll talk about this more shortly and I'm happy to talk about my own experiences that it's not quite as easy as well just stop eating then you guys want to jump in before we go on yeah I, I just want to say that the, with these chat panels and stuff like that you see this a lot just a real I'm just going to shotgun a real simple reckon out there with absolutely no nuance on it at all like, if we want to talk about how New Zealanders are generally heavier than they have been over the last 40 years, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the food options that are available. Let's talk about how much the supermarkets have, uh, you know, what what's the most affordable foods out there? Yeah. You know? And in and, and this, and this conversation, Nathan King makes that point. He says, you know, the it's a, it's also a socio, socio, sociological issue or a yep. societal and, issue that the cheapest foods are often the worst for you as well. And if we want to talk about advertising, let's talk about the fact that this is probably quite jarring to her because we've had, again, since for as long as advertising has existed, we've had really, really thin people for everything. And now we're seeing more advertising reflecting who's going to be wearing these clothes. And she's like, oh, they're fat. You know, they, they might be. They might also be normal, you know. And she's just going, oh, they're heaps bigger than the the models that we used to have. Yeah, but they're normal people that you would see in the street and that sort of thing. So, yeah. I... You, know, you know, when someone offers opinion, and, and we hear this term quite a lot in society today in commentary, and you can go, that opinion is just completely based in some kind of misogyny or sexism or, mm. or white supremacy or whatever it is. The, the way she speaks, I don't know if there is such a thing as like fat phobic, but seems to me to be completely based in that adage of demeaning hatred towards fat people. Oh, you can wrapped, hear it in her voice. Wrapped, wrapped up in a, well, we just want to make them healthier. But it, to me, and and being honest, who's heard this kind of stuff his whole life, it doesn't come across like someone caring for their health. It comes across like someone going, ew, fat yeah, people. I, I don't want to see that. Yuck. Yeah.
yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah, it reminds me of the, I mean, she's, I, you know, I imagine this is why AM show has done this because of the whole um, Jordan Peterson sort of thing that popped up mm. uh, over the past few weeks about fashion magazines and having women on, uh, on the front of fashion magazines and how that was going to destroy the fabric of Western civilization, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> I mean, she, the, in this example, she, she sort of conflates the words normal with with the words right um you know as in as opposed to wrong which is uh you know a, a sort of often a sort of language tactic that you'll see that people do just you know subconsciously um which is a great example of what we call ideology right ideology is how things are constructed as look as being normal or, or natural or, or the truth or, or whatever that that is right and you know i mean um that's the the conflation of 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 those two words that she she does there um the other thing would be uh sorry no you pat pat go you go. i was just going to say as well what you're saying before chewy about always being skinny I, it's not actually i don't actually quite think that's true it's a there, there were different steer at standards for different eras. Famously, I think Marilyn Monroe, who was the sex icon of her era, was either a size 16 or a size 14 mm. or something. And that was the, you know, we, we all hear about in history, the idea of the Rubenesque woman. And, you know, uh, heroin chic was big in the 1990s, and that's not acceptable yeah. at the moment. And in fact, we can play a little bit here and, and you know, giving Ryan Bridge some credit. You know, he goes on to talk about sometimes, you know, we also think that having models that are too skinny is not acceptable. Mm. But... In the same way, there was outcry when we put two skinny models on the front yeah, of the magazine. Yeah, you don't have to be skinny, too, you just have to be normal. But I mean, yeah, I, I yeah. look at all of us, and you're a bit skinny, but I look at, at all, at all <laughs> Mate, I've been working out. <laughs> can I just point out as well... What a horrible exercise. Yeah. Well, can I point yeah. out as well, um, a 62-year-old, ha and, and I'm, I'm not saying about this anyone in particular, but in general, having plastic surgery to look younger is not normal because that's actually a false image being put forward and in my opinion quite an unhealthy one as well of what's being modeled to society about having people who refuse to look their age and would choose to go have an operation where knives cut into them to look a younger age than they really are just kind yeah. of putting that out there as what is and isn't normal yeah i mean i wouldn't necessarily like try to play their own game of what is sort of what's meant to be normal and how we display it i'd just call her a dumb bitch you know we don't really need to <laughs> sort of and she normal, looks like a, you, know, a, a but you, you can't look at somebody in a window who's modeling a fashion brand and perhaps they're a size 16 and say that they're unhealthy that doesn't mean that they're unhealthy mm. Mm. Well, okay well fine then then you you can't have it both ways you can't have it both ways so you either advertise people with, with people who have what I would see as a normal body, maybe a size 12 or 14, you put a size she 18 decides. there, people think that's yeah. normal and it's healthy. Might be healthy when you're 25, when you're 55, it won't be. And, and look, this is the thing that, that is difficult with these kinds of conversations. And, and when you, you hear about, like, like I said before, about a conversation or a comment that's wrapped up in some kind of ism, but really the ism, uh, is the thing driving the commentary actually to say carrying too much weight is unhealthy it's perfectly acceptable you know it's perfectly acceptable to have the, to, to have the opinion that you know not having as much fat around your vital organs around your heart you know carrying it for wear and tear is a, is, a, is a better option than not but to use words like you are not a normal human being now she didn't say it quite as bluntly as that but she used the word is not normal I mean, what is normal? Normal to me would be like what is mostly what is common. And actually, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but being obese is kind of common in Western society. And then if like what I think Chua, you were saying, if you look in various groups of people, like for example, uh, uh, people with less money, being obese is even more common because as as we all know, the... Um, the foods that are accessible to someone with less money are less nutritionist, are less nu full of nutrition, decent nutrition, um, but are massive amounts of calories. So it's just, 
there, there's a lot that I that we'll we'll play one more clip and then go on. But before we do that, do you guys have anything else? You were going to say something else here, George, and you allowed yeah. me in. Yeah. The the other thing I wanted to mention, and this comes up a lot, is is there's this almost fallacy that is at the centre of their conversation, and that's that somehow the billboard fashion billboards that she's seeing are going to sort of you know poison people to become fat, right? They these people put so much sort of faith in the media that they consume for themselves that they just assume that everyone else is like zombies for for fashion billboards i mean it it, it, it's it's totally not the case right a a fashion billboard having someone you know again the jordan peterson example having someone who who's you know a bit um a bit more chubbier than the traditional fashion um uh, model on front of a magazine is not gonna make people fat it's it's food that's gonna make people fat mm. yeah just remember you've got to change your life um to make sure that this person louise wallace is is happy um certainly don't factor in your own life or happiness into it you know she just doesn't want to see you if if that's cool so you know just <laughs> get on to that just gaffer tape your mouth shut yeah <laughs> i know whose mouth i'd like to gaffer tape shut <laughs> that's been suggested in the in the comments as well before we play these comments let's actually put up uh, sorry play the last clip let's put some of these comments out there a couple of comments from carl he says one one at one point ah the old adage if they're not what i consider a healthy size then they're fat it's mm. so tiring to be honest carl also goes on to say uh what if you're polynesian our body sizes are completely different because yep. um, that's also another thing like i mean i know she's not saying necessarily bmi but the lie of the bmi you know like if you if bmi was what we took then every every male who was a sporting athlete would be morbidly obese because they just purely base it on weight and and mm. if you are a muscular la- like all the front row of the all blacks would be on death's door according to the bmi so whilst <laughs> it is a whilst it is a yardstick it's not a particularly good one um kim says i imagine that the advertising must work and that's an interesting point as well so Louise Wallace is kind of putting all this weight into the idea, pardon the pun, into the idea of what this will do to, rather than going, oh, this is going to sell our clothing, Louise Wallace thinks this is going to sell the, the, the person's body. And like if it's a if it's a plus size model wearing jeans, it seems that she's saying that people are going to see that advertising and not want to buy the jeans, but want to look like the model. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. I think what Kim's saying is the advertising mm. must work. There must be also pitching to a, a sector of society that needs those genes, whatever it is. And so you have those people in place. If you want to sell a size, a pair of size 17 or 18 or 20 genes, then it's probably best to use a 17 or 18 or 20 size model, as opposed to a size four model where the genes won't look anything like what they'd look on a size 16 or 17 or 18 size female. I don't know. Um, let's play this last clip. And this is actually going back to the sugar tax, which is why I didn't pay the first one. And Nathan has an idea of how the sugar tax could actually work. I'm going to say real quick that people slam this whole sugar tax going, oh, it doesn't work. But mm. what if we, like, you substitute, you take that money and you put it towards something like, picture this, like a My Food Baggy kind of thing, but it's, it's available for the nation. Yeah. It's run more centralised. And it's like, because obesity is a problem for, so it's socioeconomic as well. Mm. And because cheaper food is usually more unhealthy. I'm like, let's subsidize like a, a healthy food thing box that you can get, get the whole nation eating healthy. New Zealand could be a very awesome place. Now I'm going to cut off the last comment from her. Cause as we've all said, no one else wants to hear. <laughs> oh, you can tell she's her. winding up to something. <laughs> yeah. She wants to tell people to plant veggie gardens. That was what her comment is afterwards. She's like, oh, I get it. It's so basic. Gardens. It's so basic, mm. you know. When you know, she's harking back to the good old days of every family having a veggie patch. Yeah. Do you know what else was was common around there? One not, person working, and also not mm. living till you were sixty-two, yeah. like she is. It's not very normal based on those I standards th- either. Doing a veggie patch is fucking work. You yeah. need someone there to tend it, and generally that was the person that stayed mm. home. You know that that was my family growing up in the eighties. Let me also, and I'm, this is going to sound really arrogant, but I think for 40 years of overweightness, I've got some some say in this, right? It's my lived experience. Um, some <laughs> drop some knowledge on the on the overweight issue, right? And this is this is for real. 
if people are significantly overweight, we're not talking about five or 10 kilos, but significantly overweight, then I believe that the most likely chance is they probably have food addiction issues. Because you have to say without question, to get 30, 40, 50, 100 kilos overweight, and they're the people I'm talking about, you have a bad relationship with food. You can't not get to that point and not have a bad relationship with food. Now, that might be a psychological issue, and you use food as an outworking of it. It might be an addictive issue directly to food. And what I learned about myself at one stage in my life was I used food like an alcoholic used alcohol. So if you think about what an alcoholic would do with alcohol, that's what I did with food. Now, it was very difficult for me to have people I know say to me, well, just, you know, go on a diet. Just stop eating. You know, that's, and it was like saying to an alcoholic, well, that's a piece of piss. Just stop drinking, right? So that's, that's the first thing to think about when you're thinking of and looking at significantly overweight people. The second thing is, I read a book by a guy, an uh, actor in America, who talks about his food addictions. I can't remember his name. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. But he talks about how an addiction to heroin is sexy, but addiction to food is not. An addiction to food is also the only addiction that you have where you have to keep using the thing you're addicted to or else you'll die. If you're addicted to a drug, if you're addicted to alcohol, if you're addicted to porn, you don't need that in your life to actually continue living. Think about if you were addicted, if you were an alcoholic, but every day you still had to have a liter of alcohol to survive for the rest of your life. Or if you're a heroin addict and every day you had to have one shot for the rest of your life to survive. That's what it's like for someone who's got a food addiction. They have to continue to have a relationship and interact with the thing that has caused them their troubles and their health and that they're addicted to, but not just put it to the side and go cold turkey or figure out a way through you know, counseling and hard work to not need it anymore. They always need it or else they will die. So it's a very different scenario. You know, Paul's saying you can die from heroin withdrawal. I know, but you can also get through that and then not need heroin. But the heroin withdrawal can be immediate and can happen there and then. But after you've gone through that, it doesn't happen a year later. Um, so so it's I, I, I've found for me, and I think it's important for people to know to think about it in a different way, you know. To me, to think about, again, significant weight issues, not the 5 or 10 kilos overweight, but the 40 or 50 kilos overweight. You should, you should be thinking about them like an, an addict, like an alcoholic with alcohol. I'll, I'll give you an example, right? I did a quiz online talking about, al uh, about alcoholics. And it was like, do you hide alcohol around the house? Yes, I did that with food. Do you, uh, you know, do you tell lies to cover your intake of alcohol? Yes, I did that with food. So like all of those boxes, I would tick as well. Do you, you know, do you sometimes, are you sometimes short of money for the monthly bills because of you spending it on food? Yes, I've done that as well. It is really paralleling for a lot of people all the way through. And it's a different concept and a different aspect for people when you understand it's not just lazy, fat people who won't stop putting gob stuff in their mouth. For some people, maybe for a lot of people, I'll say for a lot of people who are significantly overweight, it's a real problem with food that's a lot harder than just stop eating and exercise. Like people like this crazy old bint is going on about, you know, it's not just as simple as that for a lot of people. Um, and for me, like I said, I'm down 25 kilos, 24 kilos. Uh, it's been 40 years to get to a point where I've been able to, I've been on this journey where I am right now for, for since I was 40. So for, you know, seven, eight years and it's taken me another seven or eight years to get to a point where I've had the ability to actually then do that. So I'm just putting it out there. I'm not trying to, you know, say, woe was me, because it's not. But when we think about other people and we think about people who are going through that, I would just encourage people not to think about, you know, look at that disgusting, lazy, fat person. All that. I wish they'd just stop eating and exercise. If you wouldn't think it about an alcoholic or a, someone I mean, I guess you could think about it. Someone who's got a porn addiction, just stop watching it. But you don't typically think about that. Or or a drug addict or something like that. Then you shouldn't be thinking about it, about someone who's 100 pounds or 50 kilos overweight. That's all. Yeah, good point. Good point. I thought that the, the idea from the dude of sending little veg vegetable boxes around the country was very cute. <laughs> like, the little dude, Nathan. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. he's 
I mean, you know, he's a he's a good egg, as Nathan, um, and he's looking but it for. Is, yeah, I mean, he's look, it's he's sort looking, of he's indicative looking, of these the, these sort of uh, little ideas where really we've already got supposedly a system set up called a, a a nation state with a welfare system with regulatory powers um that is failing because there's a duopoly there's um food that is bad for you that's cheaper than food that is good for you yeah uh, and so i i guess that's why i i it, it rubs me the wrong way the little boxes of vegetables fair enough i think what he's probably thinking about um if we tax for example the coca-colas and pepsis of this world what are we going to do with that, that money? money what are we going to yeah. do with that money to help the issue? So I wouldn't be surprised if that was a little idea off the top of his head. But um, actually, Crazy Old World has just talked also about, I mean, if sometimes you struggle to relate to an idea or of like a heroin addict, then just think about smokers. You know, we all know how hard it is to give up smoking. Yeah, And, and yes, there is one in a thousand smokers that just work, that go cold turkey and they just stop one day and they never pick up another one. But for most of them, it's a real struggle and it takes a really long time to get rid of that habit, not just the chemical addiction, but the habitual one. I have to tell mm. you, I mean, I wasn't ever really a smoker, but you know, in my twenties at university at a pub with a drink, you know, you'd, you'd light up or you'd get one off your friend or that kind of stuff. And I still find myself, when I, when I have a beer in my hand or something, I still find myself doing this when I'm holding the beer because it's habitual and I haven't, smoked since I was at university, you know, 20 plus years. But there is a habitual thing to break as well as a, a chemical thing to break with smoking. And I and I'll say to you again, it's the same in food. Uh, I don't know necessarily about chemical, but there is a nutritional thing to break and there is a habitual thing to break. How many people out there kind of at nighttime when they're not hungry just go, mm, I just feel like something while I'm watching television and that becomes mm. the cycle and that becomes the habitual thing that you need to break. I'm just thinking more, thinking more about it like, like, like an addiction as a and I'm not trying to, you know, play the violin and say everybody out there who's morbidly obese, just be so nice to them now. And, you know, they need, I'm just saying, and honestly, if you see someone who is morbidly, or if you have someone in your life who you never thought this before, think about them like an addict, think about their relationship with food, like a smoker is to, to tobacco or an alcoholic is to alcohol, or a drug user is to, to drugs, if they're addicted, that is obviously. And it changes your perspective. It also makes it much easier to think about how to help them. Because all of a sudden, they're not just fat, disgusting things on a billboard. They're um, people who have value and need help and, you know, need support, rather than just being scorned as, well, we don't want to normalize this, do we? I'm just imagining uh, Louise's head exploding to this whole conversation, and it's yeah. uh, it's very satisfying. You know, <laughs> I, I I really dislike those those just real basic reckons that we get on TV and and stuff like that. Whereas in the chat that we've just had, we've gone okay. Here's like you got the supermarkets, you got the socioeconomic, you got the psychological, you got the addiction based issues that's that's what obesity is there, there's everything there but uh for louise it was billboards mm. i want to see fatties on a billboard